right, a question for you for writing with Stephanie Folsom, too. What was the most important aspect for both of you to capture from the comic book and translate it to the screen? Um, let's see. I know for Stephanie in selling this show, she really kind of felt like there wasn't a stand by me for girls. You know, there, there wasn't some text that she could kind of grow up with uh, where she could see herself represented in the way that this show represented her. Uh, and I, I think that's kind of been our battle cry as we've gone through the show. I think you'll hear the girls say it too. We, we encourage them to kind of give us feedback. Does this feel true? Does this feel like something that could be in your life? Uh, and that's that's been our North Star. Uh, for me, as a huge fan of this, uh, I used to be a bookseller at Skylight Books in Los Angeles, and I would sell the hell out of this book because I loved it, and I thought everyone should read it. Uh, and I was terrified when I heard they were making it, uh, but that ended up being the reason to do it, uh, especially once I found out Ryan and Cliff would be involved and that Amazon was committed to maintaining you know, the more jagged tone that, that I think the, the comic lives or dies by. Uh, so for me, that was it. Tone was all. Balance uh, keeping making sure the dramatic storyline doesn't get overshadowed by the sci-fi or you know the kind of the genre stuff. That was a huge challenge uh, because, uh, but we constantly reminded ourselves that if you don't care about the characters, then the rest of it just feels like spectacle. You know what I mean? Like if you don't actually, if you're not concerned about what happens to their well-being, who they're losing, you know what is lost every time you have to move through time. The rest of it doesn't matter, so we always were character first. But at the same time, you know, it's Paper Girls. Like I want, I want to feel that scope. I, 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 you know, I'm gonna be so mad if it's just like in a box. I want, I want to go to these big places and have this big adventure. Um, so you know, hiring great people, uh, it's crass, but like having the budget was important. You know, because we're gonna take these things on. We want to take them on, uh, and you know, uh, just asking ourselves like, what would I? What would I want to see if money were no object? It was a little bit of an object, but uh, you know that's why we're doing multiple seasons. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, and what was your reaction when you first read the script to your character? Your gut reaction? Ooh, I would say intrigued. I was intrigued. I I want to know. I wanted to know more about why Mac is the way she is, and what happens to her. Just you know, just kind of the, that, those basic two things. I had read the comic books by then, and we got the first script by itself at the first point, so I was like, wow, like like she said, I need to know more, what happens to Tiff, what's going on, and then I was just really excited to be able to finally start filming this, and I just thought it was so similar to the comics, with having the little twists that weren't in there, and I just thought the script was amazing, and the writing was so beautifully done. What was your initial gut reaction when you first read the screenplay to your character that made you really want to jump into the story? Oh man, uh, well I don't usually play the heavy. This face usually plays like the sympathetic friend. So, um, and I was a heavy to, you know, 12 year old girls, so that's not, that's not very tough. Um, but to play a guy who has a lot of darkness to him and the audience is confused by it, like, uh, which side is this guy on? That was really fun for me, and, and he sort of goes back and forth, and when I took the job, I only had the first five. Episodes six, seven, and eight were not finished and um, uh, cleared by the studio on the network, so uh, I kind of took the job, you know, kind of took a blind leap, hoping it would, the last three episodes, uh, it would work out for Larry. Um, have you guys seen it? Okay. Um, he takes quite a turn at the end, um, which you will see. But it was, I mean, Chris is right. Chris is just a really great, thoughtful, smart writer. There was a lot to play with the character, so that, that made the decision really easy. When you were, uh, you know, they wanted to take your story, what was the most important aspect that you really wanted to make sure was retained from the comic book that had to be in the, uh, to go visually on the screen? I, I think for me, uh, to not uh, be a show uh, that is overly nostalgic and, and is actually anti-nostalgia, it feels like we all love fiction about the, the 80s, I do too, but it, it feels like a lot of it sometimes is looking at the 80s with these rose-colored glasses. Here's the music we love, the movies we love, the fashion we love, but Cliff and I grew up in the 80s and we remember a lot of the terrible things the homophobia, the bigotry, uh, and I guess we wanted to say, look, let's not do a show about 
uh, if only we could go back to this golden era, a show about progress, that I do think the world is a gradually better place and we need to keep pushing forward. And so do a show that isn't uh, just about nostalgia for a time gone by. And I think they really captured that perfectly. Yeah, you know, we didn't want the, you know, the comic or the show to be easy. You know, I think there's a lot of ways, especially when you have, you know, young actors, um, you know, that it can go to places that kind of seem a bit like a caricature. And, you know, but these girls feel really real and the story, uh, their stories and their emotions feel very real. Um, what was the process collaborating with Stephanie Folsom on this project? Stephanie is awesome. I mean, she was one of the first persons to reach out to me. And I had said so many times in interviews, this is the kind of thing that can't be a TV show. This is the thing that Hollywood is afraid of, of letting young women be at the forefront of a story of 12-year-old characters, of doing something that's both really personal and small, intimate drama, and also epic in scope like a Hollywood blockbuster. And Stephanie uh, was the first person to reach out and be like, you're a dummy. It, uh, it can be done. And uh, yes, her, her DNA is so important to the show. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, she remains a really good friend.